Let's discuss uh, the big issues or what you think the big issues are uh, for Christchurch and not just on the East. Uh, Paul, will give me the one big issue that affects everybody in Christchurch that you want to advocate on their behalf for. Housing. Why? Housing and, and all its complexity. Uh, there's, uh, there's not enough accommodation for people. There's not enough rental accommodation. There certainly is not enough homes for people. The homes that we've got are poor quality in terms of uh, not being well insulated. Um, the, the housing issue is so complex and so huge. It's the one thing that we really need to tackle. We don't have enough homes. The homes that we do have aren't um, sufficiently um, of, of the, the type and the standard that we need. So how do we tackle the issue then? What do we do? What's the answer? Well, the answer, there's several answers. One of the answers is we certainly need more homes and we need them to be in the areas where we want to live. Lots of people have been displaced from their natural community supports and people don't want to be living out on the outskirts. They want to live close to close to where they um, are familiar, where, they, where their people and their resources and their communities are. Um, we need to be looking at the quality of our houses. We need to be looking at affordability. I mean, that's a major issue. David, affordability is an issue for many people across New Zealand. And, of course, the government's just released this plan to get people living in sort of more rural communities. But to me, it seems like a bit of a Band-Aid. It's not really going to do much uh, good for those particularly wanting first-time homes. What's yeah. your take on this? Yeah, I mean, the government's been sitting on their hands for five years and they've refused to actually deal with the housing crisis. We've seen uh, house prices, for, for example, in Christchurch go up by 10% in the last year. Rental prices have increased by 12%. I mean, you know, people who are trying to save for a deposit, the house prices are going faster, going up faster than they can save. Um, and, you know, as you say, putting a few a few state houses that they've decided they don't want to own anymore into the market isn't going to help that. I mean, the Greens have got a, a home for life package um, and inside our home for life package, we um, would actually use the power of the state to borrow at at much lower cost than people can. We'd have rent to own in there. We'd have um, affordable rentals, and we'd we'd increase our warm up New Zealand program so that existing houses actually are made nicer and warmer to live in. David, give me your take on or, or rate for me Sarah's progress when it comes to residential housing. Oh look, Sarah, Sarah is a disgrace. Um, Sarah should have actually had its powers wound down. They don't lose their powers until 2015. Um, they should have had those draconian powers where they only report to the minister, um, should have been there for six months or a year. This is what happens overseas in normal disasters. Um, and I think now the people of Christchurch are actually paying for the fact that we don't have our voice. Look, we lost ECAN back in 2010. Mm. We've been disenfranchised with ECAN. We're still paying ECAN rates. I mean, that's the, that's the, the shocking thing about it. Um, and, and the City Council have had a lot of their powers taken off them, handed to Sarah, they're not accountable to us anymore. Absolutely. But Bortle, isn't the reason why ECAN lost its powers is because the commissioners were just hopeless in the first place. And what I don't hear much of people saying now is that we miss the, well, sorry, we miss the, the ECAN councillors. I don't hear that. It's, to, to me, it seems an ECAN, it's business as usual, and they seem to be going okay. I, don't, I disagree, I, and I disagree because I think the voices are saying um, those things. I think what is also happening is people are just so overwhelmed with the other issues that unfortunately losing your voice and your, uh, your dem- the democratic process around ECAN has become um, an issue that is not of as much importance as the other issues that people are dealing with. So when you think about what's happening in Christchurch, particularly in in our electorate and in my community. People are dealing day by day by day with just getting their houses repaired. Some of that other stuff that's really important to people is actually being pushed to the sideline. Like what? Well, let's let's start with employment. Why don't we start looking at um, what are we doing with our young people? Uh, We... Uh, letting our young people languish at home when we should really be encouraging them and supporting them to get into the apprenticeships to actually be the rebuilders of our city. We've got a huge resource sitting there just waiting for the opportunity to do that. Yet it seems we're employing a lot of migrant workers, David, to come to the city. Is that a bad thing or a good thing in your mind? Well, the government knew two years ago, they were warned two years ago that there would be a lag and then there'd be a tsunami of work Mm -hmm. and they, they refused to actually put people into apprenticeships to get people through polytech 
and, and trade training colleges. So they were skilled and they could be part of the rebuild. And, and so, you know, now we're actually facing a, a, an issue where we have a shortage of skilled tradespeople, um, and that is holding up the rebuild. That's holding up, you know, having houses fixed. Um, and there was no need for it. I mean, the government knew this was coming and they refused to act. I just want to pick up on something that um, Putu was saying a wee bit earlier, though. I mean, you know, there's the employment thing. The other big thing which is hitting, you know, people coping is health issues. I work in the health sector. Um, you know, the 24-hour centre in Believ, the, the emergency department to Christchurch Hospital, they are seeing record attendances. Uh, the mental health um, team where what are you work. putting that? What are you putting that down to, though? Basically, this is what happens. This is what the research shows that after a natural disaster, people manage to cope for a year or two, and then after that, the stress actually takes a toll on them. So, you know, mental health issues, physical health issues. When they get sick, they get sicker. They have to go into hospital, and it's that's actually just you know we could have told you this was going to happen three yeah. years ago. The government knew, and they have been sitting on their hands. Yeah, re- recovery is really about a whole lot of things. When um, when you turn up to the clinician, the clinician doesn't just say what are the symptoms he asks what's the state of your health house uh, what are the stressors in your life what are the things that you are doing that keep you happy and healthy those are the things that we need to be putting in place in order for our communities to recover so let's sort out the housing issues first let's sort out the EQC insurance debacle that has taken I mean goodness knows how long to sort out and then let's start dealing with the things that actually make us more happy and safe and well in our communities. David, you said the government's been sitting on their hands when it comes to health and mental health issues, but how so? I mean, we've had a Ministry of Health uh, campaign, It's OK, uh, by all accounts, so the DHB is doing its best it can to encourage community to get involved in various health initiatives. Isn't that a good start? That's a good start, but at the end of the day, they're at the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. I mean, these, these things have causes, so it's unfair to ask the health system and the DHB to actually pick up the pieces. Uh, as Poto is saying, we need strong communities, we need our houses fixed, we need need to cut through all the uh, delays and the stonewalling from the EQC mismanagement and the insurance company so people aren't getting frustrated, they're getting their issues fixed. Look, I mean, EQC have been doing all the easy work, okay, they've been p- painting people's houses where there were a few cracks um, so they can turn around and say, hey, we've fixed, you know, 60, 70%. All the difficult stuff, the rebuilds, where houses um, are falling off their foundations, that sort of thing, you know, they're, they're actually stalling on that. Mm. Is that true? Of, is that true in your mind, Paul? And if you become uh, the East um, candidate, what are you going to tell w- MP? Thank you. What are you going to tell EQC if you get the chance to sit down with the head of EQC? What's the, what's the thing you want to tell them? We need to get this done, and we need to get it done now. I mean, three years is just way too long to for our people to still be living in homes that aren't fixed. Um, I was talking to um, someone who passed on a, a story to me the other day, a, a woman in her 80s who hasn't had her home repaired, who's actually scared she's going to die before her house is repaired. As far as I'm concerned, that is just not good enough. Say one of you become the MP for the Christchurch East seat and uh, the government you support gets into power... Uh, what would you like to be the minister of? If the Prime Minister comes to you, Porto, and says, I'm going to give you a portfolio, what do you think you're experienced enough to take on as a minister, a portfolio of what? Well, my expertise is in the community, and I have a particular um, passion for young people. So I would like to be supporting young people to be the, uh, to be, you know, like, as I say, the rebuilders of Christchurch. David Morehouse. I'd like to be the Minister of Housing. I think it's such an important issue and it's such a critical issue for Christchurch and it's not going to go away in the next term of, of, of any government that we actually need a strong local voice here. Um, I actually have experience. I've built my own house. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I know a bit about the, t- the topic and I'd be more than happy to be, uh, be in that portfolio. This has been a Labour safe seat for so long, David Morehouse. Do you think you stand a, a realistic chance or how are you going to change the Labour strong stronghold of the East. Uh, it, it was a Labour stronghold up until about 10 years ago. The voting patterns have changed quite radically over the last 10 years, even before the earthquake. Um, it's definitely an open race. Um, I'm, I consider that I actually start with a very good advantage. Uh, I'm well known and well connected in the community. I have a good track record of advocating for local people. I'm not seeing much of a difference between your policies, though. How are you going to differenti- differentiate yourselves? It's because you're both of the left-leaning 
We have been in government. Uh, we have sound policies. We're working very hard to make sure that our policies, uh, particularly around housing, have a component in it that it's really specific to Christchurch and Christchurch East. Uh, we are um, a party that um, that are more than just um, issues around the environment. We cover many, many aspects of um of what's important to people. We are a broad, broad church that has for many years um, uh, represented the views of many in our community. David, is that a fair comment? Perhaps the Greens are far too uh, preoccupied with environmental issues, no, we, and that's we, where you fall down with a lot of voters. We have, we have, uh, we have four sort of broad principles. Uh, you know, environmental issues. We have social justice. We talk about local democracy, giving people a voice, um, and finally, we say we want to do it in a way which respects everybody. Um, look, under an MMP environment, um, Labor are not going to be a government on their own. They're going to require a strong Green partner. Um, you know, the Greens and, and Labor actually talk together quite a bit about this. Um, the country actually does deserve a change of government. It's got some. We've got some great ideas. Um, some of them are complementary. Yeah, we have our differences, um, and that's that's for the electors to to judge. I want to briefly talk about the anchor projects. We haven't got long to go. If there was an anchor project in this city, you could scrap or the should rugby be... stadium. <laughs> yeah, white elephant. Oh, look. Uh, uh, mm. Rather than scrapping things, I think we need to reprioritize where we're heading. And you know, even out of the out yes. of the out of the anchor projects, then what project do you think we do need oh, as a look, city? I, and urgently, is there one? I, I want to be advocating for stuff that ha- that happens out in the east, and I'm, I'm thinking about Ava Notokaro. Mm-hmm. That's a really uh, fabulous policy. What I actually want to say about anchor um, projects is let's actually cut through this. Let's actually restore some um, normality to Christchurch East. Let's tidy things up. Let's do something about our roads so that people will actually be encouraged to come out and see us. Has there been too much focus on the anchor projects and not enough on the residential side of life? For sure. And and I mean, a a prime example is QE2. QE2 was a local facility. It was used by the city, but it was actually in the east. Uh, The money that was was paid out on the insurance should have been ring-fenced to rebuild local facilities back in the east Absolutely. instead it's been put into the pot uh, the government has forced the city council to take out massive amounts of debt to build these white elephant well some of them are white elephant but these projects in the central city and that means that the kitty is now empty when the community needs rebuilding and that's that just shouldn't happen yeah i mean we're talking about uh, communities that have lost many of their small businesses as well so we we've lost population we've lost businesses and that's where we should be putting our focus so perhaps we should have had a 100 day plan for residents as opposed to the cbd is that what you're saying that certainly would have helped um yeah. probably would take more than 100 days i think the 100 days was just one of those magic round numbers that somebody pulled out and said hey this sounds good um you know to actually engage back into the community because it has to be community driven uh, would take more than 100 days and i mean it wouldn't have to take a heck of a lot more but let's get people we've got some such great ideas out in the community already for example, in New Brighton, there's some really good ideas about building a water park. So make New Brighton a destination. Okay, mm-hmm. Sumner's a destination, so why can't New Brighton be a destination? Once you've got a sort of a facility like that, a community facility, then local business people will open cafes, shops, etc. And all of a sudden, you have a bit of a, a bit of a snowball, and it starts to grow. We've just got just under a minute left. Uh, when we have the power panel, we usually do something where we do thumbs up, something positive. Let, give me something positive uh, in 30 seconds each happening in the east right now. Portal. Really New Brighton. It's an amazing initiative that really encourages people to stay local, do local things and to bring people from other parts of Christchurch into our eastern suburbs. And David Morehouse. And the Avon Otakaro Park. I mean that's just such a great idea. You know, um, nature reserves, community gardens, cycleways etc. Linking the central city through the eastern suburbs to the sea. Labour candidate Portal Williams and Greens candidate David Morehouse. I thank you both for making the time to come in here and speak to me and of course the people of Christchurch who listen to this program. I wish you both all the very best. Thanks. Thanks.